Well, we're back with another top 10 strongest today, and we're going to be touching upon the grass type this time around. As you guys know, for the next four weeks after this, we're going to be bringing you the top 10 strongest of the different typings you asked for in the comment section over on the top 10 bug types video. So I hope you guys are ready for plenty of top 10 action. So the grass typing is rather interesting, as it's one of the big three typings in Pokemon thanks to it being a starter option. But even with that, it feels like it's the sort of typing that gets forgotten ever so often. I've decided I'm going to plant my roots right here for the next 15 minutes or so and go over the best of the best with this top 10. I feel that these grass types we have here today represent some of the best of the typing and I really hope you guys see that. So we're going to start off here today with one of the many evolutions introduced in the fourth generation for older Pokemon. I'm of course talking about Tangrowth, and man is it sure worth a spot on this list. If you take a look at its stats, Tangrowth is an incredibly strong Pokemon with base 100 attack and 110 special attack, making it an offensive presence that works on either end of the spectrum. Now, that is not all when it comes to Tangrowth, as it also boasts some tremendous physical bulk. We're talking 100 base HP and 125 defense, so not only can it hit very hard regardless of what you try to focus on, but it also is going to take mostly any physical hits. Where it flounders, though, is in its special defense and speed, which are both base 50. The speed is something I feel can be overcome thanks to the bulk, but the reality is that Tangrowth is often going to be at the mercy of special attacking Pokemon, something like a Volcarona or an Articuno. However, if it takes a hit and survives but loses a ton of health, there is always the recovery offered by its fantastic hidden ability, Regenerator. So if you switch out, Tangrowth is going to get some HP back. However, if you don't have Regenerator on your Tangrowth, you'll have either Leaf Guard or Borophil. I mean, sorry, I mean Chlorophyll. Those are a couple of abilities that will only work in the sun, but they're not awful either, with one boosting speed and the other preventing status effects from being inflicted upon Tangrowth. However, both of those are just severely outclassed by Regenerator. As for moves, Tangrowth has some pretty good ones, with Giga Drain, Power Whip, Leaf Storm, and Energy Ball stab options, and then some other moves like Knock Off, Earthquake, and Sludge Bomb for variety. All in all, Tangrowth is pretty damn good, despite its flaws, and is a perfect option to open up the top 10. So we're going to follow up one Gen 4 evolution with another, and bringing one of my favorite Pokemon to use in Gen 4 games, Roserade. I just let Roserade edge out Tangrowth because as an attacker, I think it's a bit more viable. It has got fantastic special attack at base 125, and its speed is base 90, which is of course very usable in battle. It's going to take some special hits too, with that 1 to 5 special defense. So honestly, while Tangrowth is a bit more balanced on the physical and special sides, Rose Raid goes hard specially. Its hidden ability Technician can be taken advantage of as well, powering up moves with base power below 60. Though its other two abilities, Natural Cure and Poison Point, are also very viable in their own ways. If you have Poison Point, it definitely plays a part in having your Rose Raid take physical hits, since it'll forever leave the opponent worried about getting poisoned. The moves that Roserade has at its disposal include Sludge Bomb and Energy Ball, two great stab moves that'll help establish some dominance in battle. Now, if you're looking for some major damage and a way to recover health, Giga Drain is also a great option. Perhaps even more interestingly, Roserade can learn Dazzling Gleam as well, so coverage against Dragon types, among others, is there as well with just the one move. All in all, the couple of coverage moves in its move pool and some great stats, Roserade slides into the ninth spot here rather comfortably. This next one was good enough to make the top 3 poison types on that list a while back, but this time it just comes in at the bottom 3 of this top 10, Amoongus. This thing has been a staple of so many competitive teams, and its longevity is proven through its ability regenerator and that nice bulk. It has base 114 HP, and while its defenses are just base 70 for physical and 80 for special, it still rides the great HP for bulk. Also, while we talk so much about Regenerator as a great ability, there's also Effect Spore, which can be a great ability to get usage out of two, whether playing in-game or competitively. As for the moves it has, it is definitely built to be a fantastic supporter Pokemon. It has Ingrain, Clear Smog, Spore, and a few other moves that just prove its high quality in battle. Really, as odd as it is to say, those moves, plus Regenerator, are kinda why Amoongus can find itself here on this top 10. There just isn't anything more to say. The results speak for themselves. 
Amoongus is a legend, and one of the best of its typing. Though, just for the sake of it, it does get access to some cool moves, like Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, and Pollen Puff. It's a better poison type than it is a grass type. But at the end of the day, the fact that it has the grass typing tacked on is honestly all it needed to punch a ticket into this top 10. So we move on to number 7 now, and I feel it's fair to bring up our first legend on the list. We're talking about the guardian deity of Ula Ula Island, Tapabulu, a fairy and grass type with a physical dominating presence. It makes usage of the ability Grassy Surge, which is arguably the best of the different abilities that set up terrains, allowing Tapabulu and other Pokemon that are grounded to heal a sixteenth of their HP at the end of each turn. As for stats, Tapabulu has got 130 base attack and 115 special defense. Though, its one detracting point is the same as Tangrowth. It has poor speed. Though, its defenses aren't necessarily as great as Tangrowth to help make up for it either. However, even then, the point that pushes Tapabulu over the top is its fantastic lineup of moves in the pool. So probably the most impressive move of all that Tapabulu has is of course Horn Leech, which at base 75 power will be able to give Tapabulu back some HP when used. So it's a very viable source of recovery alongside a powerful stab move. Its fairy type moves it can use are all special, like Dazzling Gleam for example, though the other one is Nature's Madness. And that move automatically lowers the Pokemon's HP by half of whatever it is when the move is used, so it can work well in tandem with a move like Horn Leech. As for coverage, there's Brick Brick, Mega Horn, Stone Edge, and plenty more moves, many of which can help stop that weakness to poison types. Tapu Bulu, this has a ton of potential thanks to its strength and typing, and because of those two things, it was an easy choice for this top 10. We have come this far and only just spoke about our first legendary, so how about we talk about our first starter too? This is our first Gen 8 Pokemon, and of course I'm talking about Rillaboom. It's surprising just how good they actually made Rillaboom, so much that it is the second best grass starter at the moment. It's got an absolutely boomtastic attack stat at base 125, with 100 base HP and 90 base defense, which offers some true bulk. With 85 base speed, it isn't even as slow as some of the other Pokemon we've talked about so far on this top 10. Much like with Tapabulu, Rillaboom has access to Grassy Surge as an ability, which gives it all the benefits as a grass type, which includes, of course, the 50% boost to the power of grass type moves. Speaking of grass type moves, there is of course Rillaboom's signature move, Drum Beating, which has 80 base power and will lower the opposing Pokemon's speed, which is a nice added factor. That's not the only fantastic grass move Rillaboom can get though, as there is also Grassy Glide, which has priority all while being base 70 power. Imagine using that with a grassy terrain up. You're going to be guaranteed going first and hitting a move with over 150 base power. It's truly incredible. There are plenty of nice coverage moves in the move pool for Rillaboom as well, including Earthquake and Super Power, which help with Fire and Ice types. So with moves as good as Drum Beating and Grassy Slide, that's enough alongside the stat layout to earn Rillaboom this spot right here, closing out the bottom half of this list. We're gonna start off the top 5 with another 8th gen Pokemon, this one being one of the legendaries added into the Crown Tundra DLC expansion, Calyrex. So just to get this out of the way, we're gonna really talk about the regular Calyrex here, since its two rider forms aren't grass types. However, I will mention right now that if we had done the top 10 psychic types back before the Crown Tundra came out, I think Calyrex may have ended up taking the number 1 spot away from you two, considering just how good those rider forms are. Those things have ridiculously good stats. For right now though, let's move away from that and talk just about this big-headed talking deer weirdo on its own. So, starting off stats-wise, it's incredibly balanced. It has bulk with base 100 HP and then 80 across the board in every other stat. That is truly a picture of consistency, and that can be expected. Now, when we look at the move pool for Calyrex, we see outstanding stab moves in Energy Ball, Giga Drain, Psychic, and Leaf Storm. It's possible for Calyrex to set up too, thanks to Calm Mind, which is a massive part of what got it into the top 5 over Rillaboom. There's Pollen Puff, Dark Pulse, Shadow Ball, so many different moves that just make Calyrex a worthy Pokemon to use, especially when set up. If we were including its other forms, it would definitely be higher, but I feel opening the top 5 is just the right spot for this guy. Thank you. 
Now, following Calyrex, let's talk Unova here and bring up the great Ferrothorn. The only thing anyone has ever really held against Ferrothorn is that it has a major fire weakness. So it doesn't enjoy taking a flamethrower or anything like that. However, aside from that, this thing is built to eat hits. With 131 base defense and 116 base special defense, Ferrothorn eats hits. Also, despite the fire weakness, look at how incredible of a typing Steel Grass is. Those two typings cover for each other well, removing grass weaknesses like ice, flying, and poison from the equation. It has the ability Iron Barbs as well, that can work in tandem with an item like Rocky Helmet to help punish physical attackers that make contact. Now, even with how good Ferrothorn is defensively, it can pull out some good offensive moves as well, like Gyro Ball, which will definitely be strong considering that god-awful base 20 speed. There's stuff that can be used to set up hazards too, like Stealth Rocks and Spikes, as well as Elite Seed for health recovery. Nothing much else needs to be said about this defensive monster, other than it is definitely one of the best grass types, and most certainly the best defensively of the type. So coming in at number 3, we have none other than the sky form of a gratitude Pokemon, Shaman. As well as its regular form, of course, too. By first obtaining Shaman and using the Gracidia flower on it, Shaman will transform into its flying type sky form, and with it comes a change in stats and ability. Upon transformation, Shaman makes a drastic changes in stats, from the versatile base 100 in all stats, to lowering defenses both down to 75, and distributing those 50 points into 127 speed, 103 attack, and 120 special attack, while whilst also trading out its ability natural cure for serene grace, which doubles the chance of any side effect to happen. Now, if you keep the regular Shaman for usage over the sky form, you can still make great usage of 100 base stats across the board. So on top of being such a speed demon on the battlefield, Shaman can make great use of that speed with its ability to really make a dent in your opponent's team. The stab move Air Slash, which thanks again to Serene Grace, has a 60% chance to flinch the opponent, which is huge. That means on average, you make sure your opponent's not moving while you chip away. Of course, we can't forget about Shaman's signature move, Seed Flare, which with Serene Grace has an 80% chance to lower the opponent's special defense by two stages. Lastly, Shaman has some good coverage. It may not be a lot, but what it lacks in quantity, it more than makes up in quality. We're talking Psychic, Earth Power, and Dazzling Gleam. Those are some really solid moves to help Shaman deal with Fire and Poison, which are two of its biggest weaknesses. So, we reached the penultimate Pokemon on this list, and this one is an absolute legend in everything but title. I'm talking about the original grass type, the Pokedex's very first second stage Pokemon, Venusaur. That's right, this absolute unit marches its way here and is definitely well deserved. See, Venusaur has a lot going on for it. It's got a Mega Evolution as well as a brand new Gigantamax form. And on top of that, it has some premier special stats that really set it a step above its grass starter counterparts. Venusaur's special attack and defense are both base 100, and it's got 80 base speed as well, meaning it isn't super slow, albeit it could always be better. That being said though, those stats go up to 123 base defense from 83, 100 base attack from 82, 122 special attack, and 120 special defense. It even gained Thick Fat as an ability, which pretty much eliminated two of its major weaknesses that it really had to worry about. Its Mega provides such magnificent power, to go along with a move pull that includes such hits as Sludge Bomb, Energy Ball, Giga Drain, and more. You've got just such a great option in Mega Venusaur. But, of course in Galar, you can't Mega Evolve, so you need to rely on Venusaur on its own merits. However, there is also the Gigantamax form. When you Gigantamax a Venusaur, it'll have access to the move G-Max Vine Lash, which does big damage to any non-grass type. And it hits for four turns after the first usage on those non-grass types as well. Basically, Venusaur has been so good from the very beginning, and it is the premier non-legendary grass type in the franchise. However, I say non-legendary because, of course, Coming in at number 1 is UB04 Blade, otherwise known as the Ultra Beast, Kartana. It has the highest base attack of any obtainable Pokemon ever that is not a Mega Evolution. That puts it above everything in Sword and Shield, with base 181 attack. That's a massively scary total, and with base 109 speed, that can easily work to outspeed many Pokemon. Kartana turns into one of the most horrifying Pokemon ever. 
It's always going to have that type held against it, since its special defense isn't terrific at base 31, but its regular defense is as good as Ferrothorn's. So, on the physical end, it won't break a sweat at all. However, it's got absolutely awful base HP at 59. Though, let's be honest, who's worrying about Kartana's defenses when you can slap a Choice Scarf on it and start slamming into people with that insane attack stat? Plus, when you're knocking Pokemon out, you'll be getting a boost to attack thanks to Beast Boost. It's just... nuts. There's moves like Leaf Blade, Sacred Sword, and Smart Strike that are just going to be enough to cover against so many different Pokemon. There's nothing else to say about the greatness of Kartana, but that it's borderline one of the best Pokemon, period. Well, that's going to do it for another Typing Top 10. This one was definitely a little more challenging to do towards the bottom of the list because there are just so many good grass types that could have made it. Regardless though, I'm pretty happy with how this list came out. What do you guys think? Did I get this one right or not? I'll be checking. And don't forget that we're going to be pulling these out weekly from here on out. And I've got all the typings already figured out, so keep an eye out for the next installment. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream all sorts of games from Pokemon to Fire Emblem to Zelda and much more. I also have an anime channel called Mystic Sage, where I do anime reviews, rankings, and countdowns. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to support me even further in Gain Cold Perks, check out my Patreon. These these lovely people have all given me their support over there and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.